and welcome to Melodies of Life. I'm your host, Anna Enka. Today's episode is about New Year's resolution. Many of us are still resolving to make this year the one we get out of debt, quit bad habits, and change our lives for the better. The start of a new year serves an opportunity for many to set new goals and commitment to better habits, right? But what happens when the energy and excitement after the ball drops wear off? And how many New Year's resolutions fail to come to fruition? We all make impulses to shop from time to time because it feels good in the moment. My advice is, please don't let the short-term wants get in the way of your long-term saving goals. Planning to save money is top of mind for many people. Maybe you have been trying to pay off your credit cards but have been struggling to save money because of the inflation, our brain seems almost designed to get us into debt because some 50% of people with credit cards don't pay them off every month, meaning millions are paying their high interest on their debit. And that is a killer. The most important thing you need to do when you have a lot of debt is to forgive yourself because you need to take the step first so that you lay the groundwork of success. Here is how you can pay off your debt in a few steps. Number one, stop spending money on random things. Ask yourself, what are the things that really make me happy? What are the things that really bring me joy? I always did like this. I make stickers. And I put them on top of the computer that says, need it, love it, like it, want it. And before hitting that purchase button, make sure that what you're buying is a love. And that will bring a lasting joy for you. Like or just short-term joy, that means less than a year you will enjoy it. Once or just instant gratification where not even a day later will be going to be interested in that thing you purchased. It's just going to be gone, right? Because these ones are the most damaging because not only are you spending money you don't have, but you make your life less enjoyable because less these things don't give you a lasting joy. Because remember, it's just a want, right? I want this right now, but does it really give you lasting joy if you really think about it? No, it doesn't. And even if this is a a hard task to do, but it's like everything else, you got to practice because it doesn't come easily at first. You must do a daily practice by saying, do I need it? Do I love it? Do I like it? Do I want it? So if you practice asking yourself these questions before you buy it, the outcome is going to be very, very different for you. Then you need to make a budget plan because it's too tempting to spend money in the moment, especially if we feel sad or we are on social media and we're scrolling down that feds and all these amazing things comes up, buy this, buy this. I mean, they bombard us with this buy now, right? So setting financial goals, whatever you want to save up for a purchase or simply get by week by week. It can help you feel like you have something to work on. You absolutely need a plan or you're most likely going to fail. That's just uh, how life is. And number two, when you choose a plan, ask yourself, are you a snowball or an avalanche person? If you are an avalanche, list your debts with the highest interest rates, right? Uh, One on the top and then pay that one first and then keep up with the minimum monthly payments on the other cards at the same time. You will be much better off economic perspective paying off the highest interest rate debts first because especially you will have less total debt to have pay off over the time because it ad- it adds up real quick. As a snowball, you rely less on math and are more on motivation. So you need to make a list of the debt for a s- from the smallest to the largest, right? And then you pay off the smallest debt first because then you feel like you got to win, right? Because studies show that when people have immediate progress, they get rid of some debt, they they become energized and it encouraged them. And now they feel like they got to win, right? So these small wins help you build a momentum, like a snowball rolling down the mountain. And number three, take a good look at your spending and write them down, right? Can you spend less 
or can you earn more? You must choose one over the other. And when you go out for dinner or whatever you got to do, leave the credit cards at home because you will spend less when you use cash because you see it right in your hand and it disappears really quick. When you have a credit card, it's so easy to just charge, charge, charge because it's money that you really don't see. It's just a number. And you can also use the envelope method by putting the budgeted amount of cash to your limit to your purchases, right? So say if you have an envelope and you put $500 in there and that's what you have to spend on different things in a month. So then you will see when that $500, when that is gone, right? And, uh, and that's going to help you to really focus on what do I really need because like I said before, when we use cash, we want to spend less money. And um, <clears throat> so don't focus on the small stuff because go after the big budget items. So really take a look on what the big items are that you can budget, okay? And the four, when you get a tax re refund, don't spend it, okay? Use it to pay down your debt on your credit cards because that's what you need to focus on. And resist the urge to spend unexpected windfalls, no matter how small, because people tend to be more likely to take out loans to purchase a new car after they receive like a bonus or a tax refund. And those people are more likely to default no matter what. And five, be careful of the debt consol uh, consolidation, difficult word to say, because if you clear your credit cards by that, and the human tendency is to see credit cards awaiting to be filled up again. That's just how it works. So for many people, they start off a new year marks as an opportunity, right, to reflect on their life and think about where they would like to be in the future. And uh, so to make the 2024 your year with these goals, um, I have some tips for you that will make you feel good and make you feel your best. So there's things that we can start with. Like if you do like a gratitude journal by keeping track of things and people and other things you're grateful for throughout the year, it literally breathes new life into us. It recharges you and it rejuvenates you and it does not take up much time. It's just a few minutes to... Um, a day, like I used to do, like you can do a few minutes in the morning and then you can do like a few minutes at night. It really makes a big difference. And then if you practice mindfulness, anxiety can nag anyone during any season in any parts of life. And it can be easily to let the idea of a future or past experience inform your reality of the present. So mindfulness means doing everything you can to be grateful for what you have in the moment, where where you are in life, who you are with right now. You know, there's we just take everything for granted, but if we just keep our mind still for a moment and really reflect and think about what do I have and what can I be grateful for, you know, it changes your life very drastically in a moment. And if you do it every day, it makes a big impact in the long run. And I know that Everyone wants to eat healthier in the new year. You know, they're like, oh, I'm going to lose weight and oh, I'm going to change my diet and blah, blah, blah. And then they do it for a week or two and then they fall off the wagon, right? So I always tell people, cook something new each week, right? So if you try to eat more diverse food, because variety is the spice of life. And my best advice is to stay away from fast food, even though if it's convenient, but it will kill you slowly because it's pure poison and I don't recommend fast food for anyone. And if you drink less alcohol, because um, I think you already know that you don't need to drink to have fun. So why not make this year the one when you cut back on the alcohol, right? So doing so will actually improve your mood, sleep and skin and your immune system. Plus, it's a big money saver in the long run. And also, if you commit to a healthier sleeping routine, so many issues are traced back to poor night's sleep. So the habit you maintain to get a good sleep every night may like look different for everyone, but try to make your routine what's going to work for you, even though it's hard in the beginning. And that's with everything. When we first start out, 
it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to do this, or we go back in old habits, but really stay focused and commit because that's what you need to do to get results. And also a lot of people I would recommend to quit smoking and that includes vapes. I know that it's extremely harmful for your health, particularly for your lungs. And what saddens me is there's so many young kids are like vaping everywhere. I mean, I can't go anywhere and I just see them all vaping and I'm like, what is wrong with these people? And and I, then I see like parents joining their kids and that just want me to strangle that parent because that is not okay. And for me, that is child abuse. And a lot of ki kids think, oh, my parents are so cool, they're vaping weed. No, they're idiots. And it's not cool to be viping at all. It's the opposite. So that one is like, I really resent that one. And I do not like when I see it and I don't like parents promoting it for their kids or buying it for them because that is child abuse. So stop doing that to your own child. Give them better and healthy habits instead and don't let them go down your drain, okay? Then what we can do, we can head to a day spa. That's my favorite. I love going to different spas and really pamper myself. And I think in the beginning of the year, we all need it. You know, it sets the tone for the rest of the year. And it's also, um, there's a lot of good reasons for why you need to treat yourself. And massage is very effective because it's managing stress related to cortisol levels while boosting your serotonin. It empowers individual, it regulates feelings of anxiety and sadness, and it fulfills the need of a human contact. So if you don't get that a lot in your life, then a massage is very, very helpful. And my favorite thing is to make time for cuddling, you know, that is my favorite and I make sure I do it every morning and every night, even though sometimes there is not time for it. But, you know, we can still make an effort for it because if you reevaluate your intimacy by by thinking about time spent simply in the arms of your loved one, uh, because cuddling is often underestimated for its ability to for your physical intimacy and what it also does that it makes you feel more connected to your partner and it fights the stress it improves both your moods by increasing oxytocin hormone when you regularly physically affectionate with your partner they are more likely to see you as trustworthy and likable and when i say cuddling it doesn't uh, mean that it has to result in sex or erotic exchanges to impact relationship positively. It can be enough to just lay and hug each other or, you know, just a few minutes to really show your appreciation for the other person. And then a last one, I would say, if you write to yourself, right, if you do a letter for yourself, because when your inner critic picks up the bullhorn and write down the kind of words you would say to a friend in a same situation, right? Because we are always the hardest critic for ourselves. And we say things to ourselves that we wouldn't even say to somebody else. So why do we do it to ourselves? And uh, we all have such a hard time uh, channeling compassion for ourselves. So by writing it down makes it easier to shift the perspective. I know it sounds silly, but it is a really good one. And the most important one is to give yourself compliments, right? We can give everyone compliments, the neighbor, we meet somebody on the street, we can say, oh my God, I love your dress, or I love your shoes, or, I love your purse. But what about giving yourself the compliments? Tell yourself, Today is my day. I am thankful for me, right? Positive self-talk helps you to focus on what's good in your life. And gratitude makes you feel happier and more satisfied. And it even improves your sleep. So if you repeat an uh, affirmation related to gratitude in the morning, you're likely to show and feel more of it throughout the day. So, and the last one is to say goodbye to toxic friends because we all have them. And oh boy, are they draining or like they just take all the energy out of you or they just so toxic with their behavior and what they're talking about and what they're believing in. You really got to clear them out because I say friends are like weeds. You got to pick them out, right? Because it may feel impossible, but... 
But there are ways to break up with a friend and turn a frenemy without imploding your social life. And sometimes ghosting is appropriate. Approaching the situation with a structured conversation can help you get closure. You need to grow because they don't bring anything into your life. So get rid of it, okay? And you might be thinking, oh my God, everything you have said, I have already tried all of that, but none of it is working and you're being frustrated, right? So now I want you to ask yourself, how do I keep my news resolution and have a successful upcoming year, right? And my answer is your core values, they are like fingerprints alike and no two people have the same values. And they are the things that gives us energy, things that we prioritize our time for, and most importantly, things that align with who we are and what our beliefs are. So some of the most important things in our lives are often those that are missing. These things will be then uh, move their way up on our scale of values. The most important of value is the higher it will be on your list, you will be more disciplined in it. And no matter what, you will find time to do it. You're not going to find outside stimulation to do it. You're just going to do it automatically because it is important to you and you you value it so much. So no matter what, you will put all the time and effort into that. When something is missing within our lives, we tend to focus on it and do anything to obtain it. For example, if you want to be healthy and exercise more, but health is not your real value or priority, you're going to come up with excuses. Oh, I don't have time. You know, I want to do it, but you know, I got to focus on the kids and oh yeah, I was going to work out today, but then something came up on work and kept me. So you have all these excuses and the chances of success are extremely low because it's not your highest value. So that's why you will never succeed on it. On the other hand, if you're being like an involved good parent and is your highest value, right? Then a resolution to spend more time with your kids has much better chance of success because you really, really value it. And it's very important for you. That's why you will have a success with it. And when I talk about values, people sometimes don't understand what what true values are and they mix them up with fantasies. So and a value and a fantasy are two different things. And to have a news resolution that you will be able to keep throughout the year, it has to be what is your true value. So you got to separate that and make sure that it's not a fantasy. That's something that you want to do, but is it realistic? Not really. Will you put the time and effort to make it happen? Not really. So be really clear on that if it's a value or if it's a fantasy, okay? And if you fail to keep your resolutions, you probably still see the old habits as more effective. And that's why you keep falling back on them. So every decision you make and action you take is based upon the perception of what you think will give you more of an advantage over a disadvantage. So when your why is big enough, your how will take care of themselves. That is just life. So I want to wish you all a happy, happy new year. And I hope that you will be the best year of your all. And if you're seriously committed to your own growth, if you're ready to go inwards and do the work on yourself by clearing your blockages, clarifying your vision and balance your mind, then I would recommend that you please visit my website, Anaenka Wellness. Use my code PODCASTAA and you will get your first sessions for $100. If you have any questions while listening, please subscribe and leave your comments and you will receive answers to your specific questions. Please hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And if you love it, please give me a review and share it. It will allow me to impact people worldwide. And I will be so grateful. Thank you for listening. Love always, Anna. Happy New Year.